We have here a Insignia Blu-ray DVD and net web streaming player uh, produced by uh, Insignia, which is basically Best Buy's in-house brand. Um, these were one of the first uh, units, set-top boxes out that could do uh, streaming Netflix. Um, so it, 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 for the price, it was a streaming box plus Blu-ray, uh, which at the time for a hundred dollar pop. Uh, for the wired Ethernet version and 150 for the uh, one with the built-in Wi-Fi, uh, that was a steal considering at the time a Roku was $100 uh, for a very basic model back then. Uh, original ship date on these was about uh, July 2009, and uh, functionality was actually really ended up being really limited, and they never actually really produced much of anything. They ended up only giving us Netflix, Pandora and a very expensive uh, streaming movie rental uh, service, which was like $10 to stream a, a friggin' movie. Well, suffice to say, uh, back then, uh, Blu-ray discs were also very expensive. I never bought any until 2016. Now that the prices on them are down, Gino had to have Ghostbusters, and I figured, oh, what the heck, I got a 4K TV, even though this is 1080p, it's going to look awesome, and it does. But one problem these units inherently have is the Blu-ray slash DVD ROM drives had a lot of issues. They would get dirty, um, and uh, materials were relatively cheap. The discs had a lot of slippage, and considering this one sat in the garage for a number of years because we upgraded to a Roku, uh, so yeah, uh, this one has that hereditary problem. So we're going to open it up. Actually, um, it's really easy to service this. There's two screws on each side, and then there's four screws in the back. Just take those out. Phillips head screwdriver. They come out one, two, three. No security bits. Nothing. Piece of cake. So we just open this up. Pull it back. Gently. And then lift up. And that's it. So, you get the main power board here. Uh, there's your mains coming in. Uh, we've got power going to the uh, front uh, USB port, uh, which was for the Blu-ray Live or something when it went online. I uh, never tried that before. Um, under here is your main processor or GPU, whatever they use. Um, I can tell you this gets extremely hot. That's another part of the problem with these units is the heatsink was way too small but um, it's still functional uh, but I'll touch on that in a moment now the majority of the problem is going to be inside the ROM drive now you got this cover going over it and if you had a disc in here you could actually see part of the disc in the tray but we don't because that's a stupid idea to do when you're taking a ROM drive apart so remove the two silver screws holding that top tray uh, top part down and then you have little pressure tabs on the side. Uh, if you don't have a flat, or if you don't have a screwdriver or something to press on them, uh, you could use a uh, possibly a key. Be very gentle though. One side. Once you do one side like that, the other side just kind of pops right off. Uh, now what you want to do? Now mine's already done, uh, but you want to have some cotton swab and some alcohol. Uh, wrong kind of alcohol, I'm talking about like uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, what you want to do is put some on your cotton swab and use that cotton swab to swipe off this little round part up here if any kind of greasiness got on there this part presses down on the disc from the top down uh, to help apply pressure to the little when the, when, well, the motor comes up Next, on the, I guess, spindle, I don't, I don't I really have no idea what you call it specifically, there is a really poorly designed rubber pad that goes around it. There's a few different options you can do, and what happens is that top layer of the pad, and it's not just in this insignia player, it happens to a lot of them. I know the old Cyber Home DVD players, which were one of the cheapest DVD players ever on the market, 
at the time when DVD players, a good one was maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, you could pick up a Cyber Home, which were awesome and easily to reach and hack, uh, just like this thing, uh, for thirty bucks. Yeah, that was unheard of of a DVD player. You know what? That worked better than any of them I ever used. Um, so, anyways, there's that rubber pad that's on here. And the problem is it dries out, and once that dries out on the top, it no longer grips the disc. And the disc, the motor's going to start turning, but the disc is just going to keep slipping, and as it slips it also wobbles a little bit. And since it can never get up to its R correct RPM, the laser and the Blu-ray laser cannot read the disc. So, uh, a few different things. One, um, that works pretty decently, uh, but it's not a real good permanent solution. I found was contact cement or rubber cement. What you do is you just put a thin layer around, uh, and just, I mean, really thin, and then let it dry for a couple of days. I know it's technically, it's dry overnight, but it could be dry, uh, better if you leave it dry for a few days. Uh, another one that works great is if you can spread, and even better, now the, the rubber cement or contact cement is not a permanent solution. It will eventually wear off onto your discs, uh, but if you're just in a hurry and you have something important you want to play for the family, uh, just to shut the kids up, it's a great temporary solution. Uh, silicon, uh, silicon caulk, extremely, extremely thin layer and I mean really thin, and then let it dry for a few days. Um, that is pretty much a permanent solution. It's not going to rub off on your discs, but make sure it is a extremely thin layer. Otherwise, if it's too much, the disc's going to be off, and as it's spinning, it's going to wobble. Uh, it might scratch the di you might have scratch the disc from the wobble. Uh, option number three I found is um, I was actually able to peel the top layer of of that rubber pad off and underneath it was still a very tacky and it's not the glue it literally is the rubber they used it was a very tacky uh, uh, material under there so I kept that on there uh, once you do that take a dry cotton swab and gently swabby out your lasers if they appear dirty uh, you got the, the real tiny one is the uh, Blu-ray, and the big one here is the uh, is the DVD, the red laser for the DVD. Once you're done, you can replace uh, you can replace your the, co the cover here gently, of course. your two screws. Now if you're not comfortable or you've never worked around electronics before, I recommend using a screwdriver instead of a cordless power tool. I have zero patience and I've worked with plenty of electronics before. Uh, if you do use a corded to or cordless, you know, a screw gun, uh, don't over tighten. Just get it, you know, get the majority of the screwing in and then hand snug it don't have to crank it, just snug it. Now another thing I want to touch on, that should fix your playback issue. Now another thing I found doesn't happen so much with the DVDs, but it happens considerably with Blu-ray discs uh, due to the higher bit rate. A DVD max bit rate is 10 megabit uh, at the highest, uh, but a Blu-ray disc I've seen as high as 40 megabit uh, depending on, on the length of the movie and uh, quality of the picture. There's a lot of processing done by the CPU, and considering the age of the unit, um, I'm, this thing, this thing runs hot. I'm really surprised they didn't put a fan on it. In fact, uh, my thermal camera had this well over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 100 degrees Celsius, roughly. Um, personally, either they had, they should have went with a larger uh, heatsink, or added some sort of fan inside this case. Uh, so uh, at the moment I've been playing the disc, Blu-ray discs with the cake cover off and no issue. As soon as I put the cover back on with the reduced airflow in the case um, I noticed that uh, about halfway through a movie 
uh, it would start to skip and jump uh, even though the disc was turning just fine um, and if I stopped let it cool down I could resume it right where it left off and was skipping and finish the movie no problem uh, so I'm gonna figure out either uh, I'm gonna put some better heat sink paste on here but I mean this literally gets hot enough where you cannot touch it for more than a, a split second uh, that it's it's pretty hot uh, so I'm believing that the uh, processor or GPU that they're using is potentially overheating and then having to throttle down a bit and at that point uh, uh, your movie will start to skip I suppose another solution would be you could pause the movie for a few minutes maybe let everything cool down a bit and then resume it again uh, but I think either a small 12 volt case fan uh, there's plenty of space in here, or, or a 5 volt one you could tap into the uh, the USB. Uh, USB is down here. Uh, there's actually a whole other sec second set here uh, that you could tap the USB into. Uh, it was probably something for some way they use probably used some sort of USB uh, chip uh, based Wi-Fi chip in these units. So that's about it. Uh, put your cover back on if you so desire, and call it a day. You now should have a working Insignia Blu-ray drive, or Blu-ray player. And uh, uh, don't get me wrong, even though there were some shortcomings on these units, uh, the, the image quality really was uh, phenomenal from these units. Very impressive, actually. So, uh, that's it. Have a good night. Smile, cheese.